Good afternoon. My name is Christine Pasco, and this afternoon we're going to be talking about the value of a limbs needs assessment. If we take a look at the wiki definition of a needs assessment, it's basically a, a systematic approach, uh, taking a look at where a laboratory is in time, in terms of automation, and where it wants to be. And this doesn't necessarily have to only be a limbs, because there's many facets of automation that aren't limbs. Um, such as instrument integration, barcoding, using scanners throughout the laboratory, um, looking at ELNs, electronic lab notebooks. Um, with web-based LIMS, you can have tablets that collect data in the field for field sampling. Uh, the nice thing about those is you can also take a, a picture of the sampling site, add notes, and that can get uploaded to the laboratory even before you've returned physically to the lab. Uh, another thing that is part of automation is integration with enterprise systems, whether it's a SCADA system, um, an ERP system, uh, SAP, um, pretreatment software. So there are many different software packages, um, including accounting packages, that the LIMS can also be integrated to so that you have one complete system rather than many different islands of information. And you know, it's also been referred to as a gap analysis. It's basically where the laboratory is and where it wants to be. It's very important to perform an assessment so that you can understand what needs to be purchased or implemented. Talk to many laboratories that you know say they're drowning in paper and they're not really sure where their biggest pain points are. And an assessment oftentimes makes that quite clear. For many laboratories, it's the login process. If they're hit with you know hundreds to thousands of samples or specimens at once, that can be quite overwhelming to get those all into the system quickly. I worked on a project where they would receive anywhere from 30 to 75 to 100,000 samples or specimens a day where they needed to log them in quickly and accession them and get them into the system so that they could um, begin their testing. And also, once everything is in the database, it's easier to query, to track, to manage, and there is a reduction in paperwork because you don't have to print out all the paper reports for clients for your final reports. That can all be delivered electronically in the form of a locked PDF, and then those PDFs can be placed on a website that is secure with secure socket layers so the data can be encrypted and then clients actually would have the ability to get that data from the website 24-7 by just downloading a PDF or an Excel file or even a Word file or any other file that you wanted them to receive. Now, our agenda for today's talk is basically an introduction to an assessment and then also taking a look at the six stages of a needs assessment plan. Taking a look at the objectives, the target, sampling methods that are employed, the process of data gathering, and then also once that data has been gathered, how is that data analyzed? What does it mean? And then finally, making decisions based on the data that was accumulated over the course of the needs assessments. Some assessments can be completed in a day, um, depending on the industry, the number of people in the laboratory, whereas other assessments can take weeks to months based on the complexity of the organization. I was involved in one assessment that did take over a month because there were so many different divisions. It was almost like doing 10 separate needs assessment because of all the different departments and divisions that this organization had. And then finally, a summary of the presentation, followed by a paper that we can provide to you on how a LIMS needs assessment can save your laboratory money. If we take a look at business objectives, many laboratory owners ask the questions of what are we trying to understand? Why are we doing this assessment? Um, what are our pain points? And then along with that is identifying a lot of manual processes that are done every day in the laboratory. And the manual processes take people time. They cost resources. And in many cases, they also lead to errors. Um, a simple example of this is I worked with a, a food company a number of years ago where they were logging in their samples and making sample labels by hand. And 
they had one person that was dyslexic and they kept inverting sample numbers and it was causing havoc in terms of finding the sample uh, when the samples needed retest or the reporting. So implementing a LIMS where the sample number can automatically be generated and the label printed and you can even generate a barcode on that label is a huge time saver and more importantly it's also a quality enhancer so that you have eliminated the errors that humans have made. And in addition to um, inverting numbers and um, you also have the issue of was that a 7 or a 1? So everyone's handwriting isn't as neat as the computer. So by leveraging the auto numbering you can also ensure that the number that is generated from the limbs is unique and isn't reused. So there are many advantages of having the computer do tasks that typically people in the laboratory do. And if we take a look at you know, how much time is spent interacting with paper, I think many business owners and laboratory managers are often surprised. Uh, one of the biggest complaints that I, I hear from laboratories is the chains of custody they receive are incomplete, they're um, stained so that they can't read the information, uh, samples are missing, and I, I often joke with them that that's something the limbs can't help with. You need to do a better job of training your samplers and your customers that are supplying you with samples. Um, but there's a lot of other areas in the laboratory where people are generating paper, whether it be an instrument output, and then that output is rekeyed into an Excel sheet, and then that Excel sheet is cut and pasted into a report. So by taking a look at the steps that are being used to generate the final report, it's often easy to take a look at how those steps can be streamlined. But before you can streamline them, you have to understand what's currently in place. Um, one of the things that we all also take a look at is how we can trim cost without affecting quality. And an example was the implementing the barcoded labels. Um, another is instrument integration. Instrument integration has a very rapid payback, typically six to 12 months based on the volume of samples that a laboratory analyzes. Uh, but again, you have avoided transcription errors, you can increase your throughput, and you've got data being transferred electronically from the instrument controller, if it's a GC or a, a mass spec, directly into the limbs. There's no need to have a human rekey in those results. And the other advantage is that you have date and time stamps in an audit trail, so if changes need to be made, you have full traceability to who made the change, when they made the change, what the change was, and what the reason was for the change, along with the original result, the date and time stamp of that original result, and who had entered the original result, who had loaded the instrument. Um, accelerating the throughput not only makes the laboratory more productive, but it also makes it a more competitive laboratory because we live in a world where everyone wants their answers yesterday. And we're all fans of TV where you see, you know, certain shows where they inject the sample and within seconds they have their answer. And unfortunately, um, many people think that's the way things work in the laboratory. Um, if you take a look at the cost of not automating, uh, it can be quite high. You've you know, seen outbreaks that have occurred um, where testing wasn't done or was incomplete, um, public notice, um, recalls, and you know, worst are lawsuits if, if someone is injured by the product. And is, is there a specific goal in mind? Some lab managers say, well, you know, we want to increase our business by 15, 20%. So you have to take a look at, okay, what's it gonna cost to implement the automation to get those savings. Um, what's the target? Many times those the laboratory management team will have a vision of what the laboratory could be and what it should be based on the technology that's available and how they can implement it. One of the important things however is to make sure that the technology goals match the budget. I've talked to, to labs where they've you know informed me of all the things that they want to implement and then when they share the budget, they, they may want to implement X, Y, and Z, and the budget will only allow them to implement X. Well, they shouldn't give up and wait till they have a bigger budget. They should do it stepwise. Implement X. Once they've 
gotten the benefits of that automation, then they can utilize that resource, those savings and resources to implement X, Y, and Z, their Y and Z. Uh, and also taking a look at the um, additional resources in terms of people. Um, do people have dedicated time to devote to the project? Um, do they have the expertise? Are they familiar with project management? Um, do they have equipment necessary to implement the project? Will hardware need to be ordered? Um, is the sufficient network in place? Will wireless um, network be needed? Is a web server needed? Are there going to be tablets in the field collecting data? So really being able to take a look at the entire scope of the project. Um, what, what is the expertise of the um, staff? Is the IT familiar with the technology that um, is being proposed? Or will they have to take some training classes to come up to speed? Uh, do they want to interface with um, maybe Microsoft Dynamics or JD Edwards? Do they have the technology to do that integration? Or do they need to contact the LIMS vendor or a third party? By taking a look at the entire scope of the project, it serves to mitigate any risk that could come up during the project. Um, finally, who will decide what the must-haves are versus the nice-to-haves? You know, oftentimes they'll have different departments with different requirements and the laboratory director will actually have the final say. And in most cases, they'll look at the bang for the buck or the return on investment, what will provide us the greatest savings, and then triage the technology tools from there. Um, taking a look at different sampling methods, when we at ATL execute needs assessment, we have actually a number of different methods that we've developed over the past two decades. Uh, we use survey, we use checklists as well as templates. We conduct interviews of key stakeholders. Uh, we do observation in terms of going through the different laboratory sections and watching people work, taking notes. Um, we also hold focus groups where we talk with the team. One of the other things that we do is when we gather all that data, we return to ATL and we have a meeting of the uh, engineering team and we discuss some of the observations so that everyone has the ability to brainstorm and say, wow, you know, on this project, this worked really well, or this, this group sounds like a candidate for this technology. And once we have that session, we actually add that to our final report in terms of suggestions for improvement. And just because the suggestions are listed, it doesn't mean that they'll be right for every laboratory because every lab, they know their lab better than anyone else. So they'll have the final decision of what they should deploy and what they should wait for a phase two or phase three item. And a final report is the output of the needs assessment. The advantage of this final report is that there's a single document that lists the key requirements for the laboratory. And this can be shared with vendors, partners, um, internal key members so that everyone is on the same page and knows what the goals and objectives are. And this also serves as a blueprint for the laboratory to move forward in their automation uh, initiative. Data gathering, there's several different types of data that's gathered. There's primary data, and that's simply just on-site observations that are made by the assessor, so the key um, subject matter expert. And then secondary data is data that's shared with this individual from the laboratory staff. Maybe it's some observations, maybe it's reports, maybe it's an old needs assessment that was conducted by a different provider. Um, so it could be any number of, of things. Then there's qualitative data, which is more subjective. Um, this is an observation that the subject matter expert will make as they go through the laboratory. So they, they see things that lead them to a specific conclusion, but they may not have actual numbers, as is the case in quantitative. And this is what all scientists love, are numbers, so that they can be analyzed and graphed and um, run statistics on them. So this is basically taking a look at turnaround time, the volume of samples that go through a laboratory, um, the number of analysts in the laboratory, the number of instruments in the laboratory, the number of tests that can be done on each instrument. So taking a look at 
um, analyst capacity, instrument capacity, workloads, and that all feeds into the final needs assessment report in terms of how much more work the laboratory do with automation. Finally, uh, the data analysis stage, we're basically taking a look at understanding the results of the assessment. What does all this information mean? Um, one of the things that's, that's very important when you re uh, review any report is taking a look at the results with a different method. And if you're in the laboratory and you're looking for um, an analyte, you may use an ASTM method and then you may come back and use an EPA method or an in-house method to see if the result that you get is within statistical error or if it's, it's far out. So it's good to take a look at the, the raw data and make sure you really understand what it means. And then the next part, in some cases is easy, in some it can be a little bit tricky, assigning a dollar value to each requirement. Some are easy. If you have an analyst you know, that spends two hours a day doing data review in terms of um, checking results on reports by hand versus and making sure everything's within limits versus doing it on the screen, which may take 10 minutes in the limbs, um, you can say, well, the analyst is paid you know, X number of dollars per hour. They spend this much time a day. So it's very easy to come up with a cost for doing the work manually versus automated. So once those types of numbers are generated, it's easy to say yes or no in terms of implementing a piece of automation. One of the things that can be a little tricky is taking a look to the future. Uh, what technologies are going to prevail? What new requirements are going to um, be made upon the laboratory? So one of the things that you know lab managers and directors often struggle with is am I picking the right technology? Um, will this technology be able to grow with my laboratory or will I you know, just be stuck at this point in time? And it's important to take a look at you know, the market leaders. Um, Microsoft, Oracle are the primary database engines. Um, technology with tablets and PCs are becoming more and more popular in more laboratories and they're wonderful time savers. We have a number of clients that take um, tablets out into the field. Some use them in the laboratory. So you know, taking a look at how you can leverage technology to automate your laboratory even further. And then finally, assembling all of your data points into an action plan. Things that are going to save you the most money, obviously you're going to put those as top priorities to implement. The things that will show a, a smaller return on investment may be at the end of the list. Um, it depends, you know, it, it may satisfy a quality need that may not be a dollar value, but you, you might say, you know what, even though this is at the end of the list because this will result in higher quality, we're still going to fund this. So making the, um, getting all the analysis will help make it easier when you get to the decision phase. Um, and this slide is, is one of my heroes, Ben Franklin. He was the one that said, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. I'm a strong believer in this. I think it's very important to take a look at all the pieces that you want to put in place and what it's going to take to put them in place, making sure that everyone is on board and everyone um, understands the goals and objectives is critical. When you get to the decision process, um, once you've completed the needs assessment, you can see the current state of automation in the laboratory, You know whether barcoding is being implemented, whether scanning is being implemented, whether you have instruments interfaced, whether you have your accounting package integrated or your SCADA system or your pretreatment software um, or whatever other software you have in-house that should be linked to the limbs. Um, you can see the time savings. You don't have people rekeying in data. Understanding the resources that you have available, not only in terms of money, but human resources, what their expertise is. Do they have time dedicated to the project? Um, that's critical because in the early stages of the product, you really need to have people who are subject matter experts from the laboratory who can help implement that project. And then finally, looking at the automation needs that will provide the greatest return on investment. Um, taking a look at the ROI is critical because you, you want to make sure you spend your money in the wisest way possible. And once you've done the needs assessment, um, making the decisions is, is, should be very simple. 
looking at a few benefits of a needs assessment, um, getting a better understanding of the current laboratory situation. A lot of times laboratory owners understand what automation can do, but they think they're more automated than they currently are. And it's nice to see a report where a fresh set of eyes has come in and said, you know, you guys may want to consider doing this. I've seen this in you know, the last 20 years and we've seen people who've done this um, technology, implemented the limbs and have saved this many hours in sample login, this many hours in sample tracking, X number of hours in reporting. Um, granted, every lab is different and they save time in different areas, but overall there's a lot of time to be saved from a paper system or Excel, there's still many laboratories that are leveraging Excel. Um, and as the regulatory climate has grown, that's just not acceptable anymore because there's not an audit trail. Um, there's no good tracking of, of samples. The data sheets become corrupt. So it's important to get a database that the data can all be uh, protected in and one centralized database where it can be queried as well, reports created. Um, it's important to get team involvement because everyone's gonna have a different perspective. Um, what may be important to someone in login might be irrelevant to someone in QA, QC or someone who's in charge of um, calibrating instruments. So gathering everyone's needs is critical. And then also understanding um, the needs of people that may not be directly in the laboratory, but those people that rely on laboratory data. So someone in engineering, someone in customer complaints, um, may be very interested in um, customer relationship management functions in the limbs, tracking the complaints, um, reanalyzing samples, collecting additional samples, the results of those samples, as well as tracking the type of complaint, the severity, so it's important to make sure that the entire organization is aware of the initiative and everyone has a chance to um, chime in on their requirements. The final needs assessment report can serve as a blueprint for moving forward. And the advantage of this again is that everyone is on the same page and understands the goals and objectives. Uh, the other advantage of having a report is that there's clear definition of the project milestones, the deliverables, so it can easily be monitored and tracked over time. Uh, in summary, it's critical to have a good understanding of your starting point so that you can see what automation needs to be leveraged to get to where the laboratory finally wants to be. And also a systematic approach ensures that everyone is included in the process, which is important to the success. A dedicated project manager are also critical to interact with the firm's project manager. And then the report again reassures everyone what the requirements are, what the order of the implementation will be, um, what requirements may have been pushed to phase two, and just making sure everyone understands where the automation objectives lie. So upfront planning saves greatly in terms of maximizing the resources and having a clear path forward. ATL also offers a needs assessment service, uh, both a basic needs assessment as well as an advanced automation assessment. Uh, basic needs assessment entails one day on site, going through the data gathering steps that we discussed earlier, and then one day off site to write up the report and the findings to deliver to the laboratory. And then we also have a more advanced assessment, and this is typically for laboratories with multiple departments or greater than 100 users, where we'll basically do a deeper dive and take a look at individual workflows and the workflows in different divisions and how they interact and communicate as well. And the outputs are typically um, more metrics in terms of graphics and charts because we've spent more time on site. If anyone's interested in learning more about the service, please email us at info at atlab.com. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon, and if anyone's interested in an article that appeared in Scientific Computing on how LIMS needs assessment can save the laboratory money, please send us an email at info at atlab.com, and we'll be very happy to send that right out to you. Thanks again, and have a great day.